What's going on everybody? It's your boy Kilo Loco and today we're going to be going over AWS Amplify. Specifically, we're going to be covering authentication using web UI. And what that means is that we're actually going to be using the web flow that's all created for us, which means sign up, confirmation, sign in, all that stuff is going to be built for us. And all we have to do is simply open up a window and watch for the different results that come out that allows us to make our users get into our app. Very simple. So we're gonna get into it right now. It's all very nice. I like it a lot. So let's go ahead and jump right on in. And as you can see, we have a very simple app going on right here. It's just your basic iOS 14 app right here. We have the new app object instead of our app delegate, much nicer, much sexier, right? So what we actually need to do is we need to hop over to our terminal and we actually need to start setting up and configuring our project. So let's do that now. All right, so as you can see, I'm right here in the terminal. And the first thing that we wanna do is we want to get our Amplify dependencies into our project. We're gonna be using a dependency, CocoaPods. Let's do it. All right, so as you can see, pod init. Now we have our pod file. Let's open that with your favorite editor. I'm gonna do it in Vim. All right, two things that we need to make sure that we have in here. We need to make sure that we have our platform set to iOS and it needs to be iOS 11 or later or else this is just simply not gonna work. Um, in this case, since I'm using the, the latest and greatest, I'm gonna set mine to iOS 14. And then we also need the different pods that are going to allow us to get Amplify into our project. So let's add those now. All right, so as you can see, we have, um, iOS 14 and the platform, make sure that that's uncommented. And then we also have the pods that I specified before. So let's go ahead and save that file and get on out of here. And now what we can do is we can do pod repo or pod install repo update. All right, great. So we have the pods in there. Let's go ahead and clear that screen. We have the dependencies. Now let's go ahead and set up our Amplify project because we need to configure Amplify locally set it up with the auth configuration that we want and then what we're going to do is we're actually going to send that up so let's go ahead and start with the configuration part and we're going to do that by doing amplify init all right so amplify init is going to ask me a series of questions i'll go ahead and go through the default answers just by simply pressing enter you can choose your uh, default uh, code editor. I'm gonna choose Vim again. And the most important part here is that you make sure that you specify that this is iOS project. It should be pre-selected, but if it's not, make sure you select that. So and go ahead and hit enter to all of those. And then we should get one more question, I think. And yes, so do we want to use an AWS profile? I do, and I'll just use the default. Now, in case it wasn't clear, you will need the AWS Amplify CLI in order to get the Amplify init to work. It has to be installed on your system. So I have a link in the description that will uh, take you to the prerequisites in order to get up and running with the Amplify CLI, but it's very easy to get into your, into your project or onto your uh, computer. And then all we need to do now is just wait for Amplify to do all that cool magic and make everything configured for us or like the initialization all set up for us. And now that it's done, we can actually add a category. So today's category, once again, auth. Let's go ahead and add that. All right, we do amplify, add auth, and now another series of questions, right? So we're trying to get all configured. I want the default configuration, but I want social provider because we're gonna be using uh, Cognito in order to sign in. So we wanna make sure that we have social provider selected. Next, what we wanna do is we wanna specify how we're gonna be signing in. In today's tutorial, we're gonna be using username. Um, do we have any advanced settings that we wanna set up? Nah, let's keep it simple. Now, uh, this I'm just gonna leave default. The URI part is actually important. So whatever you type in here, it actually needs to be inside your apps info.plist. We're gonna add that later, but I'm gonna just set mine to auth, um, auth app, and then colon slash slash. All right, no other URIs need to be added. The, the sign out URI is going to be the same as the sign in URI, so let's go ahead and add that. All right, no other URIs are needed. And then we don't wanna add any other social providers. So let's go ahead and hit enter and we should be good there. All right, perfect. So now our configuration's all set up. Let's go ahead and send this configuration, which is built on our local machine. Let's send that up to Amplify in the cloud. 
So we run amplify push, it's gonna ask us another series of questions. As you can see, what it's going to do is it's going to show us the different categories that were created. In this case, the only category that was created or updated was auth. And as you can see, it says the operation was create. So now do we wanna continue? We're gonna hit enter for yes, and it's going to essentially take our configuration and send that up to amplify so that we have a matching backend for our local service. All right, so we're all done. We um, did amplify push, everything's all configured, everything worked out nicely. And let's go ahead and clear this and let's do LS on our project. And what we're actually going to notice is a couple things here, right? So we have a new amplify folder in inside of our project. And we also have these configuration files, right? We have the amplify configuration.json, AWS configuration.json. Uh, so those are gonna be our configuration files. And then um, what we wanna do is we wanna make sure that we're gonna open up this XC workspace, right? Because we have Cocoa Pods. So let's go ahead, go back over to our project. Let's make sure that that's closed. And what we wanna do is open up our workspace so that we can work with the Cocoa Pods, right? So let's go ahead and do that now. All right, so as you can see, we have our project back open. Awesome, let's go ahead and add those configuration files to our project. So we're just gonna uh, right click on our folder, add files to whatever your project name is. And, and what we'll do is we just wanna make sure that we're looking at the top level of our project. And once we are, we can select those two JSON files. So the amplify configuration and AWS configuration.json files. Let's go ahead and add those into our project and we're all set there. Now, what we wanna do is we actually wanna use Amplify inside of our project and inside of our app object specifically. We need to configure Amplify before we ever try to use it or else our app will crash. So just as long as you configure Amplify before you use it, it'll be fine. I'm gonna do that here in the app object just so that there's no possibility that, you know, Amplify could try to do something else before it's configured because I don't like my app to crash. So let's go ahead and import Amplify and Amplify plugins because we're gonna need that, uh, that import as well. All right, we got them imported. Let's go ahead and create a configuration function that's going to configure Amplify for us. All right, so as you can see, we created a very simple function. It's called configure Amplify. And all we're doing here is we're adding the plugin that we need, in this case, AW, uh, AWS Cognito Auth plugin, and then we're running configure on the Amplify object. As long as those two things succeed, and they will, uh, we're gonna hit this um, print configured Amplify. However, if for whatever reason that they don't, like if you forgot to do the, to add the um, Amplify configuration files to your project or something like that, um, then we would actually get the error and it'd be printed out here. So all we need to do now is just make sure that we call this function and I'm gonna call it in the init method of our app object. All right, like so, and all we need to do now is just simply run that project. Let's see if it works. It's gonna work. And there it is. I told you, I told you it was gonna work. I told you, ooh yeah. All right, so we have our app configured. All we need to do now is we need to add some views to the mix. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create two new files and we're just gonna set up some very basic views. Unfortunately, they're not gonna be too sexy today. Let's go ahead and get some Swift UI views going and I'm gonna call this one a sign in view. All right, so we have our sign-in view. All we're gonna have is a single button that's gonna simply uh, show us the web UI as soon as we tap on it. So whenever the user taps on sign-in, we're gonna be presented with that web UI. Let's go ahead and add that button now. All right, so easy peasy lemon squeezy. We don't have an action to um, assign to the button right now. It's just a button that simply says sign in. We try to make it not look too terrible by adding a little bit of padding, a background color, foreground color, and a little bit of a corner radius, make it look a little bit nice. So that's, the, our, that's gonna be our sign in view, right? What we also need is a session view. So let's go ahead and create another view. And this one's gonna be our session view. In our session view, we don't need a whole lot. All we need to do is simply display the text that says that yes, you have signed in. And then we need a button that's going to allow us to sign out. So let's add that now. All right, so as you can see, very simple stuff, a V stack. 
we're going to just make sure that this text is centered by putting two spacers around it and then we have the button pushed all the way to the bottom as you can see right there so very simple stuff the last thing that we need for configuration and setup is that we need to head back over to our info.plist and we need to make sure that we add the um the uri that we added when we were doing the cli steps so uh, let's go ahead and um, open up our info p list uh, file as source code. What you're going to do is you're going to scroll all the way down to the bottom. Uh, look for the last closing dict tag, the last dictionary tag. And what we want to do is we want to add in a couple of lines. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste it in right here. But what you'll actually see is the key is going to be CF bundle URL types. Um, it's going to be an array. And the next value is going to be another dictionary, which is CF bundle URL schemes, which is another array. And then the, the first value inside of that array is going to be whatever you put for your URI um, minus the colon slash slash. So in my case, I actually called mine auth app, right? So I want to make sure that I put auth app here. Now, if you don't want to do the, um, you know, the source quote, source code route, what you could do is you could simply um, either type in URL types, it has to be spelled exactly like this. And you need to make sure that you um, specify the different types so that you can do the, the proper types of drop downs, hit the URL schemes, and then um, add in your URI right here. So either way, um, I think that the source code way is easier, but it's really up to you on how you want to implement it. All right. So all this setup is pretty much done. We have our views, we have the configuration all set up, we're ready to go. Now we just need to start adding in the logic part of our app in order to actually be able to um, sign in, sign uh, and like sign out and things like that. So let's go ahead and create a whole entire separate object that's going to handle that logic for us, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a new file. This will be a Swift file, and I'm just gonna just call, I'm just going to call this auth service. All right, so our auth service is going to be extremely simple and straightforward, right? So first of all, it's a it's an observable object because we want to be able to observe the different properties on this, but specifically it's only one property and it's going to be this is signed in. We're going to mark is signed in with the app published um property wrapper, which is going to essentially make it a publisher, right? So whenever this value changes, we'll be able to observe the different um, changes and we'll be able to be able to show different views based off of whether this is is signed in or um, whether it's like true or false. So every time that we update our state, this is the value that we're actually going to be updating that's going to be related to our state. Now, the very first thing that we need to do before we do any sign in and sign uh, like sign up or log out or whatever, we need to determine where we're currently at as a user. Are we already signed in or not? Right. So let's go ahead and create a function that will check the, the user status to see if they're signed in or not. All right. So as you can see, we have this check session status function that we added. And all it's going to do is it's going to um, use um, amplify.auth.fetch auth session. Now everything in Amplify is extremely straightforward and simple to use. You're always returned, well, I should say, you're almost always returned a result that either has a success case or a failure case, right? So it's your typical Swift result type and you're going to get a success with um, a possible value right in this case we're going to get a session um, but if you fail then you get an error right we're not going to be handling errors today but so i mean you fail gracefully i'm just going to print it right here we have our session now our session has a property on it that's called is signed in it's also a bool so all we need to do is um, set the session dot is signed in to our um, to our auth service dot is signed in so let's go ahead and do that now and just like that we're going to update the state of our app to say that we are signed in based off of the session dot is signed in property now keep in mind that we are using a class and we're referencing self, right? So there's a possibility for retain cycles. That means that we need to use a capture list and use weak self. 
The other thing that we need to be um, wary of is that this is an asynchronous operation that is happening on a background thread, which means that whenever we update the state, we need to make sure that we're, we return to a main thread because this is going this uh, the self dot is signed in. This property right here is going to be directly observed by our UI, and we want to make sure that any changes to this value is happening on the main thread. So let's go ahead and add a dispatch queue um, right here. All right, perfect. So we're we're changing state on the main thread and we're also making sure that there aren't going to be any retain cycles. Now, what we can actually do is head back over to our app object and we can simply call um, check a session status right after we configure amplify so that we can figure out are we signed in or not. So as you can see, once again, we are using this as an observed object, and it's just going to be simply equal to an instance of an auth service. And once we have an instance of that auth service, we can say auth dot check session status. So that will update um, the is signed in value right now. What we can do is we can head back over to the body. We can remove this this BS uh, content view, right? And we could actually determine which view we're supposed to show. Are we supposed to show the, the signed in view or are we supposed to show the session view? So let's go ahead and add a switch statement or a if statement that's going to handle that for us. And just like that, we have the logic that determines which view we want to show. So let's go ahead and run this and make sure that everything is working as expected. And if it is, we should be able to see our sign in view. All right, bam, there it is. It ain't sexy, but it's working, right? So now we have our sign in view, which is perfect. This is exactly what we wanted. But what we actually need to do now is we need to add the actual functionality in order to sign in. So let's head back over to our auth service. And now let's go ahead and start adding in some of that functionality. I'll create a function that's called web sign in that's going to sign you in with the web. <laughs> All right, so how here we go. We have the web sign in uh, function, right? And we are simply calling amplify.auth.signin with web UI. Very simple, very straightforward. We have this presentation anchor thing. I'm going to talk about it right now, but let's skip it for right now. Uh, we have a result once again, Swift result type. So we have a success and we have an, a failure. Now, if we get su success, we're simply going to print out that yes, we did sign in. If we get a failure, we'll just simply print out the error. Now, going back over to the presentation anchor, in order for us to show um, the, the web UI, what we actually need to do is we need to show or designate a window that will display um, the UI that's going to be responsible for the um, the sign in screen, right? The web sign in. So what we're actually going to end up doing is we're going to access a window. And the easiest way to do this is simply take the window that's already supplied to the scene delegate. So let's go ahead and um, create a computed property called window that will give us our window based off of whatever window is in the scene delegate. All right, so as you can see, we have this window that we're simply grabbing from the window scene delegate, and then we're simply returning it. So now what we can do is we can actually pass this window into um, our function and use it as the presentation anchor. So now we're pretty much set up on the sign in part, but notice that we actually didn't use uh, the this opportunity in the success block to change the state of the is signed in. And the reason why we're not going to do that is because there's also this other um, tool that we can use, which is called hub. Um, so the hub is actually a listener for all these different events. And we can specify that we want to listen to all auth events, and then we can trigger functionality based off of that. So let's go ahead and create a function uh, that will allow us to observe all the different auth events and listen for those changes and then determine what our um, what our state should be. Are we signed in or are we not? So let's go ahead and add that below the web, uh, the web sign in.
All right, so very similar to what we've already seen before, except this time we're gonna be using Hub, and we're gonna be um, listening to the auth channel for different events. Now, once again, we're giving a result, except this time, what we're going to do is we're gonna switch on a property called event name of the result. Now, the event name will be one of these Hub payload event names, and we're going to be looking for specific events. So I'm gonna be looking for auth.signedIn, and that's what's going to allow me to trigger is signed in to be true. And then for the auth.signed out or the auth.session expired, that's when I'm gonna actually sign my user out. Now, just like before, we are inside of a class, so we wanna make sure we eliminate those retain cycles with the capture list. And then we also wanna make sure that we're on the main thread when we're updating these. So let's go back and add those changes now. All right, perfect. So as you can see, capture list, weak self, and then returning to the main queue um, for signed in and for signed out. So let's go ahead, go back over to our app object. And all we need to do is we need to make sure that we're listening for those events. All right, perfect. So now we're, we're, we're ready to listen for those events. We just need to trigger those events. And the way that we're gonna do that is since once again, this is an observable object, our auth service is an observable object, we can inject it into each of our views as an environment object. So let's go ahead and do that now. So this will inject it as an environment object into each of these views. And then all we need to do is head over to the sign in view and make sure that we access it and trigger the correct action, which is the web sign in whenever we tap this button. Now tell me that this is not the sexiest sign in flow that you've ever seen in your life. That's clean. All right, let's go ahead and run it make sure all of this is working. All right, so we get our sign in, right? We get our sign in view, we hit the sign in button. What happens, we get um, this, this question or this alert that asks us, do we wanna to continue to show this window? We say continue, it opens up the web UI which was already created for us, which is really nice. So as you can see here, I just need to specify a username and password to sign in. I don't have an account yet, so I actually need to sign up. That flow's handled for us too, and we're just gonna enter in a username, an email, and a password. All right, once we have all that information uh, filled in, let's go ahead and sign up. Now it sent um, a verification code to my email. I need to just grab that. All right, I got the verification code. All right, I think that I entered that in, right? And as you can see, I did, and we got the success. Our hub, um, our hub actually saw that there was a sign in event and it signed us in automatically. We're now in the session view. Oh, that's clean if you ask me. So now we're pretty much done, right? Like we, we have the sign in flow all set up. All that stuff is set up. All we have to do now is simply do the same thing that we did with the sign in view where we're actually um, accessing the auth service and we just need to be able to sign out. So let's go ahead and add that in now. So I'm heading back over to the session view. I'm gonna go ahead and add in our auth service. Oh, and actually we didn't even add sign out yet. So I just realized that let's go ahead and jump back over to our auth service. Now, as you can see, I'm already expecting to call it right here, but let's jump over to our auth service. Let's go ahead and add that sign out uh, logic in here right now. All right, so as you can see, very simple, very straightforward, just like everything else that we've done so far, auth.sign out, we get a result. And once again, we're not doing anything inside of this result other than printing, right? So um, we have our hub listener, which is going to handle the sign out and the session expired events. So there's nothing that we even need to do inside of this completion block. But if you did wanna do something um, in your app, you could just simply add it under the sign, uh, under the success, or you could fail gracefully, handle that error. Now, if we go ahead and um, head back over to our session view, we should see that th we get some um, syntax highlighting back if Xcode likes us. It likes us today, that's very nice. And we can see that everything is working and is in place. So let's go ahead and run that now. And remember that we signed in, so we should still be signed in when this uh, Xcode uh, build loads. And we are still signed in because we set it up all oh, smooth like. All right, so now we're already signed in. Let's make sure that we sign out. It's going to ask to open up the window to make sure that we can sign out. It's going to handle that event for us. It's going to redirect that, um, that uh, information back into the app and Amplify is going to handle it. And as you can see, 
we're back at the sign in screen. So let's make sure that we can sign in because we signed up last time and went into the app. So once again, continue. And let's just make sure that we could sign in. All right, I entered my credentials. Let's go ahead and sign in and bam, we signed in, yay. So as you saw, that's extremely simple. Amplify keeps everything very consistent. All its APIs are very consistent. It's very like, very swift-like. Unlike anything that you've seen with AWS in the past, this is like extremely simple and straightforward to use. I really enjoy it. So I hope that you learned something new. I hope that you enjoyed the video and I love that you made it this far. Really appreciate it. Um, but if you have any questions about Amplify, feel free to reach out and ask me. I would be more than happy to help. Hell, it's actually my job to help you. So if you have any questions about Amplify or you get stuck at some part, let's go ahead and jump on a call. I'd be more than happy to help you out. So that's gonna be it for today. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Now go out there, amplify your project, and keep coding passionately.